Hi, I'm Jason Williams, and I'm the managing editor of Wealth Daily, and I'm here to answer your questions. The first one is, what is a REIT and how do they work? So REIT is just an acronym. Uh, it stands for Real Estate Investment Trust. And a real estate investment trust is a company that trades just like a regular stock, but has different rules to follow. At least 75% of its assets must be invested in real estate or mortgages. At least 75% of its revenue must be derived from that real estate, either in rent or in interest payments on mortgages. And there's another rule that they have to follow, which is actually the second question that I was asked, which is what is the 90% rule for REITs? And the 90% rule for REITs is probably the most important rule about REITs and why I like them so much. And it's that in order to be a REIT and get special tax status from the government, the companies have to pay out at least 90% of their pre-tax income to investors. So that means that REITs pay out very big dividends and they pay them out steadily year after year after year after year. That leads me to my next question, which is what is a dividend and how is it paid? And a dividend is simply a distribution that a company makes. Uh, companies can choose to reinvest their profits in the company, or they can choose to spin them out as cash payments to their shareholders. A cash payment to shareholders is often called a distribution or a dividend. And the dividends are literally deposited directly into your investment account. You can use that cash to then uh, buy more shares of the same company, buy shares of other companies, or spend however you want. It's your money. That's why it's so great. My next question, number four, is what are the best dividend paying stocks in 2023? Um, and I've got to say that, that this takes me right back to my first two questions about real estate investment trusts because REITs, I think, are the best dividend paying stocks for 2023 because the real estate market really got crushed back in 2022. And all of those uh, REITs are publicly traded, so they were able to be priced down. So now these REITs are yielding double digits, most of them. And just for anybody who's a little bit confused, a yield is the ratio of the cash payment, that dividend, to the share price. So say you have shares that cost $10 a share, and a company pays $1 a share in dividends, that means that you're getting a 10% yield. One divided by 10. Pretty basic, right? So I would say that REITs are the best dividend paying stocks in 2023. I really like residential real estate. REITs invest in all sorts of different real estate, industrial real estate like warehouses, residential real estate like apartment buildings, individual home communities. Then you've got office REITs. I'm not a huge fan of those because people haven't really come back to the office yet. Industrial REITs with the real estate, uh, the warehouses and things like that, uh, residential REITs, I, I think are gonna be the best dividend paying stocks in 2023. My final question has to do with a fear that's on a lot of people's minds right now, which is what type of stocks do I recommend during a recession? Now, I just wrote two articles about this. Both of the articles you can find on Wealth Daily's website, www.wealthdaily.com. And the first one deals with the different sectors. There's four different sectors that tend to perform really well during a recession. The second article actually gives my individual picks for each of those sectors. But today I'll just cover the sectors and what you have are defensive stocks, right? Those ones perform the best during a recession. Defensive stocks include consumer staples, things that people have to keep buying, you know, healthcare, food, communication stocks like AT&T. You know, people usually don't cancel their phone service during recession, but they might not buy that new car or that new television. Next up, you've got financial stocks. Now it might seem like during a recession, people have less money, so financial stocks like banks would do worse, but what's leading up to the recession is a high interest rate environment right now. And banks do really well in a high interest rate environment because they can make money by charging higher rates on us when we borrow money from them. So uh, when we borrow money from a bank, they're gonna charge us, say, a 7% rate. But when we give our money to the bank to hold for us, they're only gonna pay us a three or 4% rate at the absolute most. And most of them are gonna pay even less than that. So they make money off the spread or the difference between those two rates. Also, if financial institution like Visa, say, allows people to, to spend on debt. When people start to run out of money, they start to, you know, they, they don't want to cut back necessarily right away. So a lot of times they'll start putting things on credit cards. During the recession in 2008, Visa outperformed the market by leaps and bounds because of that. Coming up after that, uh, real estate, right? Real estate pays income. Income is really good during a recession. And finally, the fourth sector that I would recommend looking into is technology. And I know technology stocks have gotten crushed recently in the rising rate environment, but the thing is, if a technology company allows other companies to become more efficient, to save money, um, to, to basically do anything to, to help them get through the recession better, 
then that stock is gonna do well. Uh, Google, Amazon, Apple, all did incredibly well during the great financial recession in 2008 and outperformed the market on the way back up as well. So those are the four sectors. For the specific stocks in those sectors that I really like this year, definitely check out my article at www.wealthdaily.com. And if you have any more questions, I really wanna hear them and I'd love to answer them, so please leave them in the comment section below this video and I'll talk to you soon.